want to speak about right. Arsenal. I wanted to speak about Arsenal because yes, this has kind of gone under the radar a little bit, especially with rival fans. And I, I showed this to a few people earlier on today. They couldn't believe what they were reading. Arsenal Football Club, right now, in my opinion, are absolutely despised by the FA. And I've said it on a number of videos recently that I, I don't necessarily believe in conspiracy theories, but I definitely think the treatment of Mikel Arteta needed to be questioned. The treatment of Arsenal needed to be looked at. And what we saw last night was the announcement that he has beaten his case against the FA, the case that charged him for bringing football into disrepute over his comments when they were beaten by Newcastle and essentially saying that it's a disgraceful decision in his opinion. And when you look through the documentation, which we'll go through now, this was heard by an independent committee for the break that the rule, uh, FA rule E3. It says here that um, A, uh, Mikel Arteta uh, was not at any time expressing a view about the behavior of match officials and making uh, any implicit criticism of their performance, integrity, or impartiality. That Mikel Arteta's focus during the interview had in part uh, been on the goal, but had a far larger part uh, been on the um, d deficient state uh, of the VAR system and the processes um, at the time of its operation of Premier League matches. It also uh, goes on here to state that Mikel Arteta did not at any point um, do anything that damages the um, wider, in, uh, that could damage the wider, uh, someone's wider interest in football, damage the image of the game, uh, that he, that in other, and also that his words could be misinterpreted to distribute or otherwise not be in the best interests of football. They concluded by saying that he was cleared, that he did not um, insult the match officials. Nothing was said by Mikel Arteta in any of the interviews that imply um, incompetence. He did not bring the game into disrepute. Uh, we're not de um, detrimental, uh, to, the, and it was not de detrimental to the best interest of the games. And it says, we therefore found the charge not proven and dismiss him of this charge. Now, that all sounds pretty normal. So all the things he was accused of by the FA weren't there. But it's the FA's argument that stands out to me and some of the proof that was delivered in this. During this process, it was demonstrated that prior to the Newcastle game, there was a, and this is what the FA said. I think they've done themselves in here. They've, they've revealed their hand. They said we had an unholy, unproductive meeting with, the ref, uh, with, with Mikel Arteta two days before the Newcastle game. So you're basically saying there's a terrible decision that's happened and you're admitting that you had an unproductive meeting with him. They then said the FA unsuccessfully argued that Arteta was more worthy of punishment than other managers due to his high profile status. So the FA said this, that because it's Mikel Arteta and it's Arsenal, we believe what he said is punishable. If it would have been Sean Dyche, if it would have been Vincent Company at smaller clubs, we wouldn't have charged him. Now, for me, reading that, it's like, so you are, I don't, I'm, I'm just reading between the lines maybe, but you're admitting that you've targeted Arteta for who he is and who he manages. And crazily enough, on top of that, Joe Willock told some of the Arsenal players after the game that the ball had gone out of play during that goal. So this is one of the reasons why Arsenal players and, and the manager said what they said, because Newcastle themselves, or the player that kept it in was like, it went out, you know. So in terms of saying it was a bad decision, they've got proof it was a bad decision. But the fact that the FA have openly admitted that they're targeting him, surely even as rivals of Arsenal, we have to look at this and be worried that they are admitting that they have an agenda against a particular individual. Because one day, that could be you, that could be me, that could be Liverpool, Man United. How crazy is it reading that in your opinion? Well, they definitely have an agenda against us with the amount of 12.30 kickoffs, to be fair. That game specifically, there's one image. Ian Wright tweeted this out. If this wasn't the football terrace, you would be thinking that I'm about to display a crazy video. This is this is the same one right here that they just said is not a foul. Um, look, I, will, uh, I supported Arteta in the Arsenal-Newcastle game, just same way I supported my manager in the Spurs game. I think the referee association, I think the, the referees are absolutely incompetent. Arteta, 
in that post match interview that he got banned for and shit just said everything that myself terry and everyone in the chat has probably said which is the premier league referees are a disgrace one of the worst referees and in, in, in not the one of the worst probably the worst referees probably in the whole world at this point considering the levels and what's expected of them uh, so the, the premier league referees continue to prove their competence just last saturday a penalty was given on uh mateta and um and Kwanzaa, and three hours later, same similar thing happened with Douglas Louise, not a penalty given. There is no consistency. There is no standard of refereeing. They're making incompetent decisions week in, week out, to be honest with you. Um, and here's the thing. Arsenal fans should be worried in terms of the agenda against their club. Because this could be something now moving forward that referees have in the back of their minds. It, it could be something, it could be something definitely that they have in the back of their minds. You know, maybe the the VAR referees in, in, in Stockley Park or whatever it's called, sitting there and looking at monitors and shit are making biased decisions. That is a possibility, 100%. Listen, people think, are always like to act that referees are, are holier than holy and they're always impartial and they're always unbiased and shit. That, that ain't true. That ain't true. Referees ain't ever been unbiased. Since the start of the sport, there's always been some sort of bias due to some sort of pressure. That's why we always mostly say whenever it's like a Liverpool or a United or a City or a Chelsea or an Arsenal against the smaller clubs, usually the bigger clubs get the decisions because the referees are more worried about a backlash if they fuck up a Chelsea decision than if they do a Sheffield decision. Because how, how many times you want the prime example? How many times have Wolves been robbed this season? If we want to talk oh. about the one club that need to be the most upset with refereeing decisions this whole season, 100% Wolves is number one. Wolves have been absolutely shafted this year, but no one cares because it's Wolves. If Arsenal, City or Liverpool or Man United got as many fucked up decisions against them, go go against them in high importance games like Wolves done this season, the referees would be absolutely lambasted. Look at Simon Hooper. Simon Hooper is a prime example right here, right there. The, the, the referee of the Liverpool Spurs game. He refereed that Le that Liverpool Sheffield game, and <coughs> and anytime, sorry, and anytime the camera looked at him, it's almost like he was shitting himself on the pitch. He was so scared to make any decision, and once again, he himself was inconsistent because he's the same guy that sent off Curtis Jones for the tackle on Bissouma, but did not send off the Sheffield United player for the same exact tackle on McAllister, which was a follow through that ended up stepping on McAllister. So this is the, the inconsistencies is a problem. There is massive inconsistencies in this, in this league. In my opinion, the only club that so far this season has not has not had any decision go against them, any major decision is Man City. I'm just saying, someone has to say it as it is. Man, I don't think Man City have gotten any, you know, difficult referee decisions to go against them. The other clubs have all been shafted, to be honest with you. And the lack of consistency is the, is the biggest issue in this league. And it will continue to, to be so until the referees are trained. Let's stop blaming VAR. Let's stop blaming the system. What is, what, what's VAR? VAR is, is, stands for Video Assistant Referee, right? That's what it stands mm -hmm. for. Video Assistant Referee. That's it. VAR is a system. It's cameras. It's lines. It's you using the same exact way to just essentially make your decisions better. I cannot blame a computer and lines for the referees being incompetent. You know why? Because the referees were shit even before VAR. And that if, if VAR is cancelled tomorrow, this league will be an even worse disgrace than it currently is in terms of refereeing decisions. How many offsides have been given this season in which they came back and they're like, oh shit, that's actually not offside. How many onsides have been given this season that's like, oh shit, that's offside. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's the referees. Yeah. It's the referees that are the issue, not the system, not any of that. And Arsenal yeah. fans should be really worried right now. And they need to continue to escalate the situation. No, so they, do they... all the clubs because the Premier League need to all fix this refereeing bullshit they got going on. Again, what I would be now in trying to investigate if I was Arsenal, just in, in relation to this situation, is, well, if you're telling us that you think Arteta is more worthy of a punishment because of the club he's at, what other decisions are you making that are based on the status and the profile of a football club? Because as far as I'm aware, like I don't like how, how that's gone in society. I, I get it on Twitter. I've had, pe I've had people like, I've tweeted, that disagreed with me, I've just tweeted back politely disagreeing with them. And I get DMs saying, bruv, man, you're bullying me. How am I bullying you? Well, I, you responded to my tweet to you. And now people that follow you, because you've got lots of followers, are giving me shit. Oh, I know. What you... and, I, and, I, and I've had a lot of this. And I just, I always message in the same thing. And I message in the same thing. And I just say, I'm not accountable for what other people <laughs> say to you. 
But this has been something that's been perpetuated on social media for a long time now. And it's got into the mindset of individuals. Yes, I've got more followers than than a lot of people. But there's people out there that have got more followers than me. It isn't down to the person with more followers to like if you're saying things that are completely wrong so if you've got a million people follow you and you're giving out terrible advice around health care or what you know eat this is how you should cook chicken but the way you're doing it could kill people i can imagine you being called out for that but not for not for turning around and having a, a simple disagreement with somebody that is never an incitement to anything but we live in this kind of victimhood mentality world now where Everything's twisted in that way. And what the, what the FA have tried to do is use that victimhood mentality of, well, Mikel Arteta is at one of the biggest clubs who have a huge social media presence. So him disrespecting us in their eyes, you go, this sort of weird arrogance and hubris view they have of themselves. If Mikel Arteta does it, it's worse than another manager of a smaller club or a club with a smaller social media presence. It's nonsense. You know, it doesn't so matter. If, if, so if Chris Wilder does it this, this Saturday, it's okay because it's Chris Wilder. But if, um, you know, I don't know, Pep Guardiola does it, it's a problem because it's Pep Guardiola. Exactly. And and again, so my view is this. This is where it's got to be a worry for people. If you're if you're turning around and saying that you're making certain decisions based on the size of the club, is that happening on the pitch? Is that happening with penalty decisions? Is that happening with 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 close off sides? Is that, what else? Where else are you applying this bias based on the size of your football club or the size of your presence? This shouldn't happen in any walk of life. It doesn't matter for me, right? If... Me and you commit the same crime. They're like, well, Terry, you know, you've got a bit more money in the bank account than Hassan. You've got more followers online than him. Therefore, you should get in more trouble for committing this crime. It's like, no, we've done exactly the same thing. Um, you know, if there's an abuse of power, then that's different. But Mikel Arteta is doing nothing that other managers don't do. And they've literally said, we think he deserves a punishment more than them because he's a higher profile manager. And for me, that's crazy, bud. That is crazy. Crazy. It is, it is crazy. And 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 look, by the way, I'm glad Arteta called them out. So so was I was I when my manager did it, and I hope more managers continue to call it out. I saw that I see the Wolves manager going like, you know, um, I could I could do two things here. I could complain and it wouldn't really change anything, or I could just get on with it. Yeah, but how long would you got to get on with it for? Like, okay, we, we could take it if it's like a mistake every 10 games or some shit. But the problem is they're making mistakes a lot. And the problem is they're actually making a lot of mistakes in high caliber games as well, when you think of it. Yeah. Like the City Chelsea games and multiple big games this season in which they've made fucked up decisions. Liverpool Spurs, in terms of like with VAR, absolute worst disgrace of, of a game right there. So look, there are so too, too, too much is going on. Ars the Arsenal Villa game, for example, that happened this week. I don't think Arsenal Arsenal manufactured their own downfall because Odegaard, Saka and Martinelli for me were just shit in that game and they needed to do better. But at the same time, Arsenal fans are right to also say we did deserve a penalty because three yes. hours ago, yes, yes. Juanpa literally yes. did the same shit to Mateta and a penalty was given, even though it, got, it took five hours to check, they gave a penalty. So look, there is a problem with the lack of consistency and uh, I hope more and more and more referees call out this English Premier League referee garbage because if I bring referees from the local Jordanian league, they do better than 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 the ones in the Premier League with ease, and I can guarantee that. And it's getting to the stage now where I just think like it, it just it's just too much. It's just too much. Week in week out, there's a fucked up decision that some idiotic referee makes, and this is this is the problem. Like we're we're all probably going to watch Liverpool United this Sunday. None of us would be surprised if there is a fucked up decision that goes in yeah. Liverpool's favor. Because it's at Anfield and the ref might shit himself. No, no, I agree. I agree. And you want it to be about the football. Some super chats here. O'Malley says the bias was made clearer when Arteta got a yellow for celebrating. Then Wilder runs down the sideline last week and got nothing. Yeah, there, there we go. Exactly.